Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When dealing with a bone defect, our surgical aims are really quite simple. We aim to fill or repair the hole. We want to support the prosthesis. We want to facilitate load transfer. And in that process, maintain or restore our joint line. And the first and essential quest inspection to be made is the status of our articular platform. That's because the articular platform has very important function. It's the best bone upon which to sit your prosthesis. It enables physiologic uh, load transfer down the metaphysis into the diaphysis. So if the bone platform is relatively intact, as we get in type 1 and 2, our task is relatively simple. We need simply to fill or repair the defect and ensure that our implants are rigidly fixed. And what we do and how we go about it depends on the location, type, and size of the defects. Traditionally, if we have a significant defect, if it is contained, uh, we have to use impacted cancellous chip, and if it is non-contained, perhaps structural bone graft. And the attraction of this is that there is prospect of bone regeneration and repair. But unsupported graft are vulnerable to resorption and late collapse. So there's a tendency these days to use prosthetic augments. They are simple to use, uh, they're inert, but there's no capacity for biological repair and they can be difficult to remove. Uh, recognizing this, the limitation of these two options, we went about to uh, cre create a fenestrated titanium cage upon, into which you drop a impacted cake of cancerous bone. And we've been, and this is how it looks like, and we've been running clinical trials now for about two and a half years, and the, uh, results have been encouraging. The intention is simply to have a cage that will still support your prosthesis in event of graft resorption. Now, if the bone platforms are substantially compromised, then the joint line will be altered. The prosthesis cannot be fixed onto the bone platform. The, your load transfer function will be compromised and when dealing with this, we need to find somewhere else to fix our prosthesis. And we should identify where the good bone is and to fix our prosthesis at that level. And we want to find mechanisms to reproduce physiological load transfer. And we must remember to restore our joint line. And the traditional way we went about this was to get a diaphysial locking stem repaired our bone defect, protected the repair until the bone reconstitutes. And if you look at the literature, the results are variable. You get up to 20% failure in 10, 15 years. And there are problems with late loosening, there are problems with stem pain. If you were to do this, and if the metaphysial bone has been significantly damaged, you're going to need to give the patient a lot of time for that bone to reconstitute before you allow them to fully weight bear. Now, the current trend is the use of cones and sleeve. With cone and sleeve, we very quickly and effectively fill the defect, and there is a possibility, uh, depending on the surgical situation, of metaphysial, diaphysial fixation or two zone fixation. It, and through this, there's a possibility that we can get more physiological load transfer. They are very good utilities, but it is not magic. It cannot defy the laws of physics. There are limitations. If your metaphysial bone is substantially compromised, 
you cannot be relied on to do all the heavy lifting. You, you do, here's an example where there wasn't enough protection from weight, the patient was allowed to put on weight too early, and the construct failed. Or as in this example, there's a failure to recognize that in such a situation, you need to get your primary fixation where the good bone is. It's a fundamental principle, whether it's revision, hip or revision knee, you've got to get your main fixation where the good bone is. And in this case, it is in the diaphysis. Pure metaphysical fixation and loading, it only works if your metaphysical bone is in reasonable condition. Take an example such as this, and it'd be apparent to you for all the reconstruction you do and all the gadgets you use, that metaphysical tibial bone will not be able to load there significantly for a long time. So the question you ask yourself is, where is that good bone? That good bone is in the diaphysis, and that's where we should seek our primary fixation. Now, cones and sleeves, uh, they have cr cross purposes, but they are not identical. Sleeves can provide you fixation, they're also means of augmentation, but cones do not provide you with significant fixation. Sleeves are connected directly to your prosthesis, either through tapers or through screws, and therefore, the quality of load transfer and of prosthetic fixation is superior to that of a cone. The cone is not directly connected to the prosthesis. There is, besides having less good uh, load transfer and prosthetic fixation, there is also always going to be some measure of micro-motion and the risk of later-day fretting. So, a connected sleeve will give you better fixation, better load transfer, but they will be difficult to remove if you do need to remove them. The advantage of cones is that they're, they're more modular, you have a lot more options, uh, you can position them independent of the main prosthesis, but there is some risk of later day fretting. Most tib tibial defects can be dealt with by sleeves, full or half cones, or, but femoral defects, the choice of the augment that you use will depend on the type of defect you're dealing with. And there's a whole array available in the market today, ranging from simple distal augments to tubular cones to full metal jacket for major defects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.